H0-1 minute. All right, Antoine, can you explain the final ignition sequence? You said it starts when the cryogenic arms pull back. What do we watch for then? At H0, the DDO calls Allumage Vulcan, the ignition of the main stage cryogenic engine. But we do not lift off yet, because there will be a seven second wait while the onboard computer is checking the performance of this main engine. After, if all is well, it will give the order to light the two boosters and we are off. All right, so watch for that. Watch for the arms to swing back at minus five seconds. We'll cut away now and we'll let you hear the DDO, the range operations manager, call out the final 10 seconds. Enjoy the liftoff. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcan. Allumage EAP, décollage. scheduled we had ignition you saw it Ariane 5 beginning her mission rising off the ground here in French Guiana with a lot of fire beginning her fourth flight of the year right on time at 1730 local carrying UTEL sat 25B SHL1 and G sat 7 under me you can hear the DDO's voice saying that all is well on board fine shots of a daytime launch which is not always the case always impressive no matter how many times you see Ariane powering up into the sky a launch is something quite sensational to witness. Right now, the boosters are providing over 90% of the total tr thrust, propelling the launcher along its trajectory at ever higher velocity. Weight at liftoff over 770 tons, which is a lot. She's burning 5 tons of fuel per second, which is also a lot. 2.5 tons in each booster, if you can imagine. And the core stage, the central stage, burning another 300 kilos of fuel every second. Ariane 5 is now following the flight program in the onboard computer, which gives all the commands, including stage separations. We're in the first of four flight phases. The first three are powered, and the last is not. We'll be describing each in turn. You can follow Ariane as she heads east across the Atlantic. Right now, in the first uh, flight phase, the Vulcan engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will burn each their 240 tons of propellant in just under two and uh, one and a half minutes. And are the, they have the first we get rid of. You will hear the DDO call out that milestone. In just about 10 seconds. We're heading east, as we said, out over the ocean. The decision to build the French Guiana base here was made in 64 when France wanted a new base, in part for its opening on the water to allow for launches over uninhabited areas. And there you see the boosters there are the two lights on either side. They have been separated, and the light in the middle is the main stage continuing to burn. That's what it looks like up there with the onboard camera. There's another booster which is out of camera range. The onboard computer detects the drop in fuel and separates them. Is that right? As they had no more propellant to burn, the, the thrust decreased, and the onboard computer detected the drop in acceleration, and therefore it decided to separate them. Fine shots, as, uh, as we mentioned, the sky is so clear, you could see the first stage continuing to burn. Give, a, give us a look at the, uh, on the upper left, on the lower left of the screen, you have a cursor crawling up there, and then you have some numbers. Uh, we're expecting the fairing separation in a few moments. Go ahead with the your The curve uh, represents uh, the expected trajectory, and the moving uh, white dot is the actual position of the launcher. Below, there are two items to look at. A stands for attitude in kilometers and V for velocity in kilometers per second. We've had separation of the fairing right on time. That's what it looks like. There's another half which is out of the camera range. There are two pyrotechnic cords, two sets of pyrotechnic cords, I should say, that separate the fairing, right? In an it's explosion. Yeah, uh, but it is very important to emphasize that this small explosion is controlled. So no threat to the vehicle. But uh, is there a reason we separate the fairing now? 
Of course, because we are out of the dense layers of the atmosphere over 100 kilometers of altitude, there is neither, neither friction, friction nor heating anymore, so we discard any dead weight when possible to maximize the launcher's functional operation. We are into the second powered flight phase. Remember, there are four phases in all. The boosters have done their work. Only the single engine burning now, which you saw earlier in the sky. It'll burn for nine minutes. What's the role of the main stage? The key parameter is kinetic energy. So increasing speed is paramount. We did just dispose of drag by coming out of the atmosphere the fastest we could. Now we can be focused on pure thrust. By using highly efficient propellant, which is true enough with cryogenic ones, we can benefit from not only a significant propulsive force, but what is more for long duration. And let's say too that the main stage has, has also been designed to have the best available performance mass ratio. There are two different propulsion systems on Ariane 5. The cryogenics used in this stage more efficient than the solid propellant, basically, that's the difference, that are used in the boosters. More of the mission in a moment, all is well. But first, the latest news from Ariane Space. July 25th, Ariane 5 successfully placed into orbit two new satellites, AlphaSat for InMarsat, the heaviest telecom satellite ever made in Europe, and InSat 3D, a weather satellite for India. It was the fifth launch of the year for Ariane Space and the third Ariane 5 mission of 2013. The next Soyuz mission is set for September 30. It will put into orbit the next four satellites in the O3B constellation. The first four will launch on the Soyuz from the CSG on June 25th. And the following Soyuz flight is slated for later this fall. It will launch Gaia, which will map the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Gaia arrived here in French Guiana on August 23rd and began preparations for her mission. And closing out the year in December, the final Ariane 5 mission will put another pair of telecom satellites into orbit, Astra 5B for Luxembourg's SES Group and MSNS for A for Spain. Ariane Space's Stefan Israel went to India on one of his very first visits abroad as chairman and CEO. On the trip, he took a close-up look at the Indian Space Research Organization facilities in Bangalore. He also met with Dr. Radhakrishnan, chairman of ISRO. Ariane Space remains the market leader. Over now to Jacques Breton for a recap of our commercial activities and a look into the future. This evening's launch illustrates the commercial success enjoyed by Ariane Space in Europe and in France with customers such as Utelsat, but also on the export market with loyal customers such as ISRO in India. There again, we have ambitious newcomers on the telecoms market, such as Eshailsat in Qatar. Ariane Space has over 4 billion euros worth of contracts today, mainly on the export market, 90%, with some 80 customers throughout the world on all five continents, whether we're talking about private operators or government organizations. This year, Ariane Space has already signed the equivalent of some 700 million euros worth of contracts. Next week, there'll be a further announcement made at the Euroconsult conference in Paris. And with that, we should go beyond the 1 billion euro level for contracts, still respecting the 90% level for the export market. So see you next week in Paris at the Euroconsult conference, and you will hear more. All is functioning normally on board. We're about to be picked up by our first downrange tracking station over the border in Brazil, a town called Natal. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground. DDO is saying that we've been picked up 